Hey boys and girls, look at this picture for a moment before we get started with our story. This book takes place in a very large city. And in this large city, there is a hotel. The hotel is the setting of our story. That means the hotel is where most of the action takes place. Have you ever stayed at a hotel? A hotel is a business where travelers, whether they're on vacation or they're traveling for business, or maybe they're traveling for a special event, well, they need a place to sleep. They need lodging or accommodation. And so they go to a hotel and they rent a room. And the room usually has a bed and a bathroom and sometimes a little kitchenette so the person can rest and then the next day go on with their business. Well, in this story, the Sharemore Hotel is the place where this traveler is dropped off to get some rest. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13. Well, just like the title of the book says, there's a dinosaur on the 13th floor. That really does look like the shadow of a dinosaur. Hmm. Maybe this is a mystery. Hmm. Maybe it's going to turn out to be a scary book. I'm not quite sure. Well, I guess we need to read it and find out. The author's name is Wade Bradford, and the illustrator is Kevin Hawks. All right, maybe we'll find some clues. Oh, here's another picture. It is a big city. There's a taxi cab. I think our main character is in that taxi cab. Yep, there he is. He just got dropped off. And here's the picture from the front of the book. He's being welcomed into the Sharemore Hotel. Look at that 13th floor now. I don't see any sign of a dinosaur now. Hmm. Oh, well, I guess we better keep reading. This book was autographed by the author. How about that? And he even left us a little note on the title page where it says, There's a dinosaur on the 13th floor. He's added, who knows what else is in store? With a little smiley face. Hmm, I'm curious. Are you? This book was published by Candlewick Press, and the copyright is 2018. Welcome to the Sharemore Hotel, said the bellhop. You must be Mr. Snore. Let me show you to your room. Oh, the sooner, the better said Mr. Snore. I am very yawn sleepy. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Do you notice anything unusual over here behind the desk of the Sharemore Hotel? That's odd, isn't it? Hmm. Here you are, said the bellhop. Room 104. Sweet dreams, Mr. Snore. That's nice. Mr. Snore thanked the bellhop, got ready for bed, crawled under the covers, and switched off the light. But as he was about to lay his head upon the pillow, squeak! He heard a squeaking sound. <gasps> Hello, front desk. This is Mr. Snore in room 104. Uh, somebody is sleeping on my pillow. Yes, that would be the mouse, said the bellhop. I believe he has had a very long day. Uh, so have I grumbled Mr. Snore, and I do not wish to share a room with a mouse. So, the bellhop 
led Mr. Snore to a room on the second floor. Sleep tight, Mr. Snore. Mr. Snore crawled into bed, switched off the light, but just as he was falling asleep, he felt a rush of cold air. Ah! Zoink, oink, 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 oink. Zoink, oink, 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 oink. Mr. Snore called the front desk again. Someone is hogging all the covers. Oh, yeah, that would be the pig, said the bellhop. Shall I bring you another blanket? No, Mr. Snore fumed. I want another room. So the bellhop took Mr. Snore to the third floor, where there were no pigs or mice to be found. Mr. Snore kicked off his slippers, crawled into bed, Oh, and was just about to close his eyes when drip, drip, drip. Sorry about the leaky ceiling, the bellhop said, as Mr. Snore marched past the ocean view on the fourth floor. This time, declared Mr. Snore. I will find my own room. He found one on the fifth floor. I don't think you will like this room, whispered the bellhop. Unless, of course, you are fond of, uh, spiders, cried Mr. Snore. Quick, said the bellhop, to the elevator. How do you feel about bees? asked the bellhop. The same way I feel about spiders, said Mr. Snore. Please skip the sixth floor. The seventh floor whew, was too hot. Brrr. The eighth floor was too cold. The ninth floor was just... Giraffes, cried Mr. Snore. The bellhop smiled. Would you care to guess what's on the tenth floor? On the tenth floor, they found hamsters. Whoa, where are the rest of the hamsters? asked Mr. Snore. On the eleventh floor, said the bellhop. Ugh, then I will stay on the twelfth, said Mr. Snore. So they went to the twelfth floor. Hey, it's empty, said Mr. Snore. No one ever stays here, explained the bellhop. Perfect, said Mr. Snore, and he lay down and shut his eyes. Uh, it does tend to get a bit noisy, the bellhop warned. But Mr. Snore was already fast asleep. Stomp, 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 gurgle, 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 swish, swish. Mr. Snore rang the front desk. I cannot sleep with all this noise. I'm going to find a room on the 13th floor. Oh, dear, no, said the bellhop. On the 13th floor, there is a click. Mr. Snore did not wait to hear the bellhop's warning. He went up to the 13th floor. There were no mice, no pigs, no penguins, no snakes. No spiders, no dolphins, no bees, and no giraffes. Not even a hint of a hamster. Nothing but a giant room with a giant bed and a giant pillow. Ah! <sighs> oh, 
I do hope Mr. Snore will be all right, said the bellhop. Ring, ling, ling, went the phone at the front desk of the Sharemore Hotel. Hello, this is the dinosaur on the 13th floor. Somebody is sleeping on my pillow. Huh, <sighs> the bellhop sighed. That would be Mr. Snore, he said. He has had a very long day. Fine. Well, that's a nice dinosaur. He gave up his bed for Mr. Snore. And it looks like he's got some company. There's a porcupine, an armadillo. There's that little mouse, I think. Or maybe a rabbit? Penguin? There's the mouse. Maybe a little owl? Those snakes are sleeping. Even the bellhop is asleep. Well, that's the end. I guess it had a happy ending for Mr. Snore, huh? He got to sleep. Hmm. All right. I guess we better get out of here and let everybody snooze. See ya.